Stand Out – Leadership in the Spotlight with Evelyn Brink. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Stand Out Show. And today I'm very excited to have my very special guest, Simon Scholes with me, who is, as we established, a social media coach. He is so much more than that, so it took us a while to get to this. <laughs> social media coach, I'm going to say you're a content consulting king and a video production expert. And we're going to talk about how to use social media for your business and your brand. We're going to talk about video. We're going to talk about what to do if not video and what to expect from doing all your social media because what we don't want is for you to um, get lost in all the loud noise and advice that is out there and then actually not do the things that really matter. So if we're here Absolutely. to stand out show, make sure that what you have to say is heard, seen, felt, understood, and life is... That's all I care. Yes? We got Sounds that? Sounds good to me. Perfect. I that in a, like a five-minute mega intro. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Simon. So good to have you here today. Thank you very much for having me. So I'm really curious, first and foremost, for all the people that don't know you, could you give us a little introduction into who you are and, and what you do? And, and if you want a little bit of why as well, I always like a bit of a context. Yeah, sure. So um, how long a story do you want, really? Um, so a, a long time ago, I was an athlete. I got very injured. I was training for the Sydney Olympics. Um, fell out of athletics after a couple of years due to my injury and because of that I was at university and a couple of my friends said do you fancy doing the university radio station I thought yep yeah, sounds like a bit of a laugh might cheer me up a bit um, so we did the university radio station I got to at the end of doing the U university radio station which was what's called an RSL a temporary licensed radio station that was on FM around Hull which is where I'm from and I got to the end of it and I thought you know what this is much easier than having a real fucking job. I'm going to do this for a living instead. So that's exactly what I did. I, I graduated uh, with a business information systems degree and then went on to work in radio. And that's kind of what I did for a long time. About six years in, I got disillusioned a bit with radio and everything else like that. I kept getting looked over for the, the main gigs. So I was like, right, okay, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Stopped doing radio altogether. Ran an athletic shoe shop as you do yeah <laughs> um i got a phone call while i was doing that asking me to go and do some live television work so i did some live tv work as a presenter um running did you, like, did you love it do you like the camera oh, i loved it absolutely loved it. It was, it's really confusing when you're talking to the camera though and you've got somebody in your ear going okay five four and there's an advert break coming up and you've <laughs> got to hit hit the nail on the point um but yeah absolutely loved doing that it was a live sports tv show with a co-presenter um, and what it was was SMS based, so it was a bit like a talk show on radio, hmm. but it was on TV. So people would SMS in their questions oh, right. or their points yeah. of view, and we'd talk about it. So that was really cool. Um, and then I got a phone call uh, from a radio station down in Newbury, which is close to where I'm based now, um, called Kick FM. And they said, "Can you come in? We want to have a chat." Eight hours on the train to get there. A 15-minute interview. They offered me the job, um, and I was a drive time presenter there. And then. After a year, I was binned off from Kick FM. Um, I, was, I was fired. Won't go into why, but I was fired. Uh, nothing bad. It's just, um, yeah. I won't go you were into flashing it. your abs in public. <laughs> That's the one, De definitely. Flashing my abs on the radio. Um, <laughs> and I went to work for a company who provide bespoke in-store radio stations. And this is kind of where I could start to use my degree because part of my degree was marketing. Um, and so I was, I was running services for people like Ikea, uh, for Game, for Burberry, for Topshop, Top Man, the Arcadia Group, those kind of people, running radio services for them and the marketing that went on to those services as well, writing the adverts, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I stayed there for a really long time. Um, after 10 years, um, I left and started up Perception Studios, which is what I do now as my main business. Um, which is a video company, but we call ourselves a visual marketing agency because we work on all aspects of visual and marketing for companies, uh, but helping them create content that is bespoke to them, but for campaigns, rather than just turning up and, and filming somebody and it costing a small business a fortune to have somebody film them, actually going to a big business and saying, right, you've got the budget to spend. Now we're going to start creating some content that will specifically work for you as a brand and maybe lead through to a, a long piece of content, a long form content, a documentary, 
piece, whatever it might be, but lots of lovely short form pieces, cinemagraphs, 3D GIFs. Again, maybe people talking to the camera, but just really short form, interesting, creative pieces that will draw people into the brand that will then hopefully get them spending some money because they're putting spend behind it. Wow. So then they also run something completely separate, um, which is my own personal brand, which kind of leads into the video stuff, which is all about helping smaller businesses and even bigger, bigger businesses as well understand what they can do for my favorite four letter word, free. Wow, awesome. Was that succinct enough? That's <laughs> quite, I think comprehensive enough for everyone. Um, yeah. You want to know why I do it as well, Dad, don't you? That's I right. I want to know why you're doing it. Yes. Can, but can you give me the 30 second so, version? Oh, uh, 30 second version. So the video side of things, it was purely um, when I was working in radio, I found that actually I wasn't as being able to be as creative as I wanted to with audio and visual is a great way of doing that. The social media stuff and actually helping brands understand. I've worked in social media for a long time, back in the days of Yahoo forums, MySpace, all that kind of stuff. So I've got a background in it. But a few years ago, my dad died. And when my dad passed away, I stepped away from the business for six months. And when I came back, obviously, we had no business coming in because I was the one who brought all the business in. And I actually thought, actually, what do I really want to achieve in life? Mm -hmm. And I was sick to death of going to network meetings and actually meeting other video agencies who were very much of the ilk of, oh, well, you must have a video on your website because it'll increase your SEO and your dwell times and your conversion rates. And I was much more of a case of, do you really need a video on your website? Is it necessarily what you actually need to have? Because everything that they're telling you is a load of bullshit unless you make it actually happen for yourself. And you do that through social media and building a brand and making people want to visit your website in the first place. And also a lot of businesses are told you must have a video, but actually do they really need a video because the website's already converting. So what they need is more people to the website, not more people to stay on the website because okay. they're already buying from them. So, here's, here's what I'm hearing is that you became very focused on what actually matters. What's yes. actually important here? And let's just cut the nonsense of you should, and this is the new you should, and just go into no, but what do you need to make it happen for yourself or your business? And exactly. That, you're drawing the satisfaction from that step. Very much so. Much, much more so than just uh, offering, essentially, uh, I talk about it a lot, a magic pill. Oh, I like a magic pill. You don't have a magic pill? I don't have any magic pills. Not with me at the moment, no. <laughs> <laughs> what a boring Wednesday this Next. is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's it for today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as we're talking about what makes people stand out and what is it that makes it happen for people, what would you say? I mean, what is it that makes it happen for a small business? Um, and what does it make? Is it different? from that which makes it happen for a business. Big, 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 big. How do you speak English in the first place? <laughs> but the, the, the big thing for any brand and any small business to remember is the bigger businesses were also small at one point or another. And it's, it's understanding that they've only got to that point by being consistent and patient with their brand and what they've got to say. So when somebody tells me, oh yeah, I do social media, and then you look at the social media and they posted once on Facebook last week, and the time before that was a month ago. And you're like, well, that's not consistent. And what you're saying isn't consistent with your brand. And what you're saying is selling all the time. And Facebook's the only place you're posting. And the one thing that makes most people bigger nowadays, brands and people like that. So, for example, Gary Vaynerchuk, Lewis Howes, um, Grant Cardone, all these people are making consistent, regular content. Mm. And they don't get hung up on this, oh, it's got to be perfect malarkey it's all about just putting out the value that they've got to give and the information that they've got to give okay but so they, what you're saying is if you're being consistent you will build your brand slowly but surely as long as you're not trying to consistently sell what as long as what you've got to say is of value to somebody it, it might not be you, you can't just copy other people you've got to say it in your own voice um but as long as you're giving that value so i had an accountant once come to me and say I don't understand why I'm not getting loads of business. And I looked at what he'd done and he'd written two blogs and that was it. And both blogs were really, really salesy. I said, well, let's come to that afterwards. Just doing two blogs is not enough. And you wrote them in July and it's now October. Yeah. You've done nothing in between. Why? And this is like having a video on your website. Just having a video on your website will not automatically draw people into your website. It will help a little with SEO. 
but having a video on your website doesn't make people come to your website. So just having that amazing four or five thousand pound video made for your company and sticking it on your website is not going to automatically bring you millions of customers. So how many videos do you need? Um, oh wow, there's a there's a million dollar question. It, uh -huh. I guess, I'll charge it, you later. <laughs> yeah, it, um, you. it really does depend on what the business requires. Um, and we were chatting about this earlier. But a, a lot of people will come to me and say, I've been told I must have a video for my website. And for me, it's, as I said, it's much more important to get the right type of content for your business. So if your website is already converting, for you, if you're already getting people coming to your website and buying your products, so not just bouncing off your website and going somewhere else straight away, they're actually going through your website and then buying what it is that you do as a service or buying the products that you sell. Why do you need them to stay on your website longer? They're already converting. You don't need that. So what you need is more people coming to your website. So that's where multiple pieces of content come in and building that brand across social media. If you have the money to spend and you're able to do the social media aspect of it as well, then having a video on your website is not a bad thing, showing what your product can do and you only need one but you do need the consistent content elsewhere to draw people back into your website. Then the consistent content that you're talking about is the most simple content that, that we can do by ourselves, right? We take our phone, we do a Facebook live, but apparently not just one. Uh, and we yep. do regular postings and regular blogs and the podcast. The question I have about this is actually probably two questions. One is this whole consistency thing is something I hear shouted out everywhere. Be consistent, be consistent. Personally, I find it super difficult to be consistent. And I know a fair few people with a similar creative mindset mm -hmm. that also find it difficult to do, 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 do like that because we jump all around the place. Yeah. So there's a question that I have for you about how, how do you work with, with the people that have so many balls up in the air that consistency, it's almost like, oh, well, that's what it takes. Oh, I'll never make it because I don't have that. Um, um, that's for that. me, and, and obviously I'm a creative myself, but for me, the most important and the first step for any business is a plan. So at the start of most of our years, we will set our goals for what we want to achieve through the year, whether it's weight loss or we want to do this in our business or we, we, we want to go here on holiday, whatever it is that your goals are. But we always forget, or a lot of businesses forget to put together a marketing plan for the year, what they actually want to achieve through the year, what they want to talk about, what they want to put the message out for so what i will sit down initially with any business is make sure they've got a plan in place now preferably we'd plan out a full year because that way then they have a default plan to fall back onto and then should anything happen through the year in their industry that is ideal to talk about then they can talk about that instead and take the other subject matter out but even just planning a month ahead is, is enough it's so that you know what you're going to talk about every single week because so many people end up with this creative i've got i want to do this and i want oh shiny red ball and i want and so they end up talking on a scattergun basis so they end up going i put something on instagram and then a totally different message on twitter and then something completely different on facebook and then another thing on linkedin and you don't have the time to do that you're a small business you're doing everything yourself you're possibly outsourcing one or two things but most of the stuff you can do yourself and you don't have the time to start coming up with a different message for every single platform every single day three or four times a day because you just don't, you can't do that exactly. It becomes exhausting. So if, <laughs> exactly, if I had the hair, I would do it myself. Um, so having that plan in place helps you understand what you're gonna talk about on a week by week basis. Yeah. Um, and the one step that I try and get people to, to move on to once I've got that plan in place is blogging. So the kind of the two work together. So what you do is you go, right, okay, what am I comfortable blogging about? and looking at different events through the year, what's happening. Uh, so I'll give you an example. I was working with a, um, a leadership coach and we planned our entire year. And she said, well, when should I start? And I said, right, okay, this is gonna be a push because it is content and you need to create. But how about tomorrow? And she said, right, okay, why? And I said, well, tomorrow's May the 4th. She said, well, why would I start on May the 4th? I said, because tomorrow is Star Wars Day and you should write a blog about why the Death Star got blown up because the architect missed the weakness because Darth Vader was a shit leader. And so she's tying it back into... The, exactly. So she's just tying it back into what her business is, but also making it searchable for people who will be just searching Star Wars Day. She doesn't know if the CEO of BP might have been searching stuff for Star Wars Day, found her blog and gone, oh, I'll have a read of that. God, that's really interesting. We should get her in to talk to the business and got her in to talk to the, 
you just don't know. So yeah. This speaks to two, uh, to another interesting thing, which is being plugged into what's going on in the world. So you know about Star Wars. Day. I want to suspect because you like Star Wars. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> I have no clue about these things. Where would where would people who don't know Star Wars? I mean, there's lots of examples of this, but where do you find out about things that are relevant to lots of other people that you can plug into? It's, it's all about finding, I mean, if you're going to be fairly instant with stuff and on, on the day, then maybe look at what's trending on different social media platforms. So like Twitter obviously has the trending line down the side of the, the page and you can look at what's trending. If you want to know ahead in advance, there's loads of different national calendars, event awareness days, all sorts of stuff. There's lots and lots of different ones out there. It's just literally, there's a great website that I tell most people to use and get your audience to get a pen and paper, write this down. It's G. O O G L E Google. Go on to Google. I know it's an amazing tool. Go on there, type in what's happening. Send out today. the link to everyone who signs up to our mailing list, okay? What's Absolutely. <laughs> what's happening this month? And you, you can find out. It's 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 dead simple. You just gotta it takes a little work. And yes, it might mean that okay, I'm gonna have to plan my year's calendar over two or three days. Well, so be it. If you've got your entire year planned out over three days, I, I do it over what's called Hell Week in January. But if you do it over two or three days, awesome. You've got it absolutely nailed down. You know what you're going to be talking about and you're sorted. So the first thing is to have a plan and most people will never make that plan. Yeah. People who make the plan, many of them will not stick to the plan. Yep. So now what? Uh, so it, I, this is where accountability comes in. So you either want to work with somebody, a coach who's going to keep you accountable or other local business owners. Why not go to a networking event, get a bunch of people who you get on really well with and go, look, we need to all do this. We sh we're all different businesses. So why don't we hold each other accountable, set up a WhatsApp group, something like that, and just go, oh, I've just posted my blog. Oh, I've just done my Facebook Live. People can then go and check on it, go, yeah, that's good. Oh, you know what? Maybe you should try this. You should try that. Because you're going to get different experts and people who are going to be able to see things on a different angle to you or what have you. But try, try and be held accountable, whoever that's by. Like I say, you could pay for a coach or pay for someone like me to hold you accountable, but you don't have to do that. You could, again, my favorite four letter word. Self organize. Most, yeah, you could self organize in theory. But it yeah. is, this is where it's wonderful to have coaches and groups where you, you know it's, the, it's done for you or done with you at least. So that's yeah, fun yeah. Really but make sure that definitely somebody holds you accountable, not just somebody who just goes, oh, you've not done it. Oh, well, it's, you've not done it. Well, why the fuck have you not done it? Well, come on, what's the reason? And, Tell, and, it. Tell me everything. And it better be good kind of thing because if it's just I was watching Love Island last night, that's not good enough. No. What about I was on Love Island last night? That would probably build into you being a huge social media uh, brand and it's own right anyway. So that's, although I, I wouldn't say it's worth doing it, it's, um, it's yeah. What about <laughs> I had my personal Love Island version at home last night and I was so busy. Yeah, that's not good enough. <laughs> what? It was so good. <laughs> I get it. Unless it's been a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> so the other question that I have in regards to the consistency and what we're talking about now is, there's so much talk about all the things that you need to do for social media. And everyone mm -hmm. seems to be buying into that. And yeah. some of it is really a myth because you can also completely distract yourself from your business by getting sucked up by social media. Yeah. What is it that we really need to do to stand out, to have, as you say, your value heard in the world? What is it that we need to focus on? Let's cut the crap of all the things that ideally we would be doing the essential. What is it? Know your avatar. If you know who you're going to be talking to, then you know where they're going to be hanging out. People who say they're not on Facebook are talking crap. There's 2.8 billion people on Facebook, so they're most likely going to be on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So have a Facebook page, a Facebook business page, and definitely post on it. But where else are they going to be? If you're selling uh, glitter for makeup, then the chances are you're appealing to a younger female. They're likely to be on TikTok or Snapchat. But if you're selling accountancy, then they're not likely to be on TikTok or Snapchat. So maybe look at LinkedIn. But I am a big advocate personally of removing the friction. So if you put your efforts into one area, still don't forget the others because those people will eventually have the spending pound or the spending dollar. Because just because 
the audience is young on TikTok right now, it is going to age up. It was young on Facebook once upon a time, and now it's our age groups and it's getting older. And TikTok is exactly the same. So don't listen to people who say, oh, well, it's only for 15 year old girls. You go on there and actually you'll find there's a lot of 40, 50 plus year old women and men who are creating content going, I'm a 40 year old man and I'm on TikTok and I'm here to stay. So screw you youngsters. So, oh, okay. and, and there's a lot of them on there. So yeah, it's, it's know where your audience is, put a large amount of effort into that particular platform, but don't forget everything else. So, and this is why I try and get people to create content they can repurpose very easily and turn into lots of different things because that way you have a bank of content that you can use in lots of different places. You've done a live video, that's great. Now you can make that into one or two, three or four short form pieces of the video one minute long that you can then post on Instagram and on Twitter. You can take the audio off it and you can use it as a podcast. You can turn some of the quotes and the bullet points out of your podcast into memes. So then you end up with content that you can use across the board all over the place and you don't have to specifically make everything bespoke. So are you saying that you would do that? So let's say I make a Facebook live about how to be great on camera or mm -hmm. how to free yourself from uh, social conditioning. You would then take that video and create the memes and the bullet points and the audios from that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, you would just take the audio off the video um, and you can do that when you download the video itself or you can do that in post and put branding on either end of it. You don't have to have branding again. Like I say, content doesn't need to be perfect as long as the value that you've got to give is enough for people to want to have a listen in the first place. But it's nice to have. Um, but yeah, you can, you can do so much with the content. And when you've spoken, you will have logically gone through like what i'm going to talk about because you probably blogged about it in the first place when you write a blog you put three or four great resonating points into a blog well you just automatically take those out word economize them a little bit turn them into memes you've spoken about them in the video so why not just cut out that block and have it as an individual piece of content and just make sure you've got a call to action on the end whether it's a slate or you speaking whatever it is you just want to make sure people understand who you are and what it is that you do, but that it's another piece of content that's giving value and can draw people back into the main piece of content. And, and let's just go a bit like how to zone out. Why on earth do we need all this content? Why is it so important to have all this? For me, and this is what I speak to my clients and when I do keynote speeches about, it's all about friction. So every single form of content, has a level of friction attached to it. So you could be the Stephen King of blog writing. Everybody wants to read what it is that you've got to say. But if I don't want to read, I'm not gonna read your blog. Now, what you've got to say could be the most valuable piece of content to me and could turn my life around. But if I don't wanna read it, I'm not gonna find it. Okay. So how are you going to then remove that level of friction? And you can do that by then going, okay, I've done a blog. Now I'm going to do a video. And then you do that as a live video. Me personally, what I try and encourage people to do is live because perfection is not important. If you've got your phone or your camera, you go start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, because you keep going, oh, that's not right. I've made a mistake. I'll do this again. Yeah. If you're live, there's no getting out of it. You fuck up, you move on. So you just keep cracking on and keep doing what you've got to do. So that's why I encourage people to do a live video. Mm -hmm. Now, an excuse for some people might be, well, I don't want to watch a 10 minute video. Fine, not a problem. I've edited out the key points, four key points that I've mentioned in the video as short form pieces of content. So then you can consume those. Then the 10 minute go, well, I don't like your face. Not a problem. I've got memes. You can go to, I know you're beautiful, but some people might not like my face, um, especially when I'm unshaven. So th they go to <laughs> Instagram. Instagram, for example, and, and look at the content and read the content there. Or they might go, well, I, I haven't got time to start scrolling. So then the most frictionless piece of content, the podcast. So the idea is to appeal to a wider audience by serving them the, si the, the kind of food they like, basically. You do gluten-free yeah. content and you do your dairy-free content. Everyone gets what they need. Yeah, but it's all on that one subject matter. So you're not scattergunning. So you're not confusing yourself and you're not confusing that audience member who might follow every single channel. Mm. Wow. And, this is what, and this is what the big brands do as well. Um, Ikea, for example, who I've worked with in the past, they 
sit down and they go, what are we going to do for the year? And they specifically focus their campaigns on one specific area. So recently it was all on kitchens. Now kitchens is a massive area, but if they just go, we're talking about kitchens and people understand that's what they're talking about, then now they can go get kitchen stuff from Ikea. Now kitchens could be cutlery, could be coffee tables, could be uh, chairs, could be a, a new oven, whatever. But they understand it's just kitchens. So they're not scattergunning themselves, not going, you know what, it's August and we do cutlery and plates and glasses and tables and chairs because it's a bit like a radio link, one thought per link. Don't confuse the audience. Nice. Don't, I like this. Don't come off the like back of the, exactly. Don't come off radio. the back of a song and go, that's Jimmy Raquai. By the way, what's black and white and eats like a horse? Did you see Standards last night? Oh, aren't Harry and Meghan really interesting? Oh, isn't it awful with what's happening with Brexit at the moment? Because the audience just go, and just get confused. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So this is, I really like this. Let me just put this out again. One, one thought per link. Such yes. a great value, uh, value piece from the, from the radio world. One thought per link. So with your messaging, one thought, one piece of content, one topic, and then keep and going then move on. That, and then move on. Hmm. I love this. I, I love that there is a, a structure and an, an overview of this. So you go, okay, let me think about what the different topics are. And then I zone in. And yeah. then I could, I'm going to talk about the details of that topic. So I'm actually taking my clients, potential clients, customers, all the people that like me, that don't like me, that will like me in the future on a journey of experience rather than flash them with brilliance. That is all over. Exactly. The place. And once you get millions of people following you, then you can get a little bit more sporadic about it if you want to. Okay. But right now you haven't got an audience. Nobody's coming to watch your Facebook live because they don't give a damn about you. So <laughs> <laughs> just get the content out and start building that audience and do it regularly. So, so and just didn't start with millions of people watching it. So there's the other magic piece. Start building that audience. Yeah. How does that audience start building? Is that really just, just you putting mm -hmm. your content out or isn't there more involved, like getting them from places with their interests? Like so this, this, is the, this, this is the interesting part that social media and there's one really important word in there and it's not the word media. You sure it's, isn't it? being social so, so if you created some content start telling people about it start being social but also start reaching out to people and helping them if you are an accountant go on to twitter and find people who are struggling with their taxes just type in struggling taxes on the search bar every single social media platform has a search capability so start using it some of them are boolean which means you have to put everything into quotation marks because it either searches every word separately or you can tell it to search the whole thing as as a whole um so whatever your search term is but just reach out to those people and help them if they need to pay for your services then so be it but actually just don't go into the conversation expecting to make money go into the conversation expecting to build a tribe of, of another raving fan get somebody else consuming content so if you've done a podcast on great things to save money on on your taxes then when somebody goes i've just had a huge tax bill then reach out to them and say you know what i've done a blog about this maybe for next year have a read through this you might be able to save some money and they go oh thanks ever so much read your blog and go you know what i quite like this guy and the way that he writes i'll follow him or you could be a plumber and you've given out some tips on how to bleed a radiator so that you can save money on your heating they say i quite like this woman you know what, I'm going to start following her content because she knows what she's talking about in the plumbing industry. It's not expecting anything in return because social media is about being social. So you're really encouraging people to be human beings and being nice mm -hmm. to each other. That's what yeah. I'm doing. And, and the, the danger for the kind of people that I deal with is that they're very easily being social. They just find it sometimes a little more difficult to get business from that. So there's, right. the, I guess, a balance <clears throat> game again between than just helping everyone and being a great person, being super social, but then how do you build a business from there? Yeah, so it's, it's all about not giving away too much. So if you consume my content, everything I give away is free and it's all value driven, but it's not specific to your business. So if you want something specific to your business, you come to me and you say, Simon, I run an accountancy firm, what is it I can do? And then we can sit down, find out who your brand is, who your avatar is, and actually start to really niche down into some content. Yeah. And so it's, it's, if you're an electrician, you don't want every Tom, Dick and Harry ringing you up and saying, can you come and change a light bulb? Can you come and rewire a plug? Because yes, you're going to make money out of it, 
but you don't want to be making money out of it because you're making 90 quid out of some little old lady who wants to plug rewiring. So why not teach people how to do that themselves? And then when they go, you know what? I've just blown the flute fuse and my RCD box is knackered. That's when they call you out for the bigger jobs that you're going to make more money from, but also that you're actually going to, only you can do the stuff that only you can do. So the value only you can give, but the smaller stuff, you don't necessarily want to do it. So think about what it is that maybe not necessarily you want to do yourself or that people are, I, I can go off and learn anyway. Yeah. So if you're a, a baker, you can make the greatest cakes and people will come to you because you make the greatest cakes for wedding cakes or birthdays or what have you. But what's the harm in you teaching people how to make macarons? Yeah. So, so what I'm hearing is um, that you're going for the, the very specific, more high end stuff as in that's what you can actually pay me for but we're very generous yeah. on the more generic levels where we can teach, which yes. is, yeah, we have a, absolutely. A yeah. Time. And if people want to action that stuff, brilliant, go away, action it, do it, do it, do it. And then start making some money and say, you know what? I love this guy. who gave me all this value in the first place. I'm now making money from it. I'll approach him because hopefully they can help me with moving my business on further. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, got that. So to round this up, I always like to ask about the things that we shouldn't do because it's all good to talk about all the things we should do in this. How, you can decide, how do I mess this up royally? Sell with, sell with every single message. And what does that uh, mean, sell with every single message? Like how, would I, how, how do I t teach me how to sell bad stuff? You, you, you shouldn't sell. So basically social media is not for selling. So you shouldn't just walk on and expect people to buy your products. Even if you've got a product to sell, give them the value from the product, put money behind selling something. So put money into Facebook adverts, put money into Instagram adverts, put money into Instagram swipe up adverts. That's where you're going to make your money from. Social media is for just giving that value, helping people out, reaching out, and then if they come back and comment on a piece of content, the other day I had somebody comment on my content and say, can I, do, can I use this platform for my business? I said, absolutely. And if you want to know how, then we can have a chat. Because that's a different conversation. Mm -hmm. I've already given you the value. Mm -hmm. I've already said you should be using this platform and this is how you use it. If you want to know how you should use it for your business, that's when you approach me. So don't put the sell into the main content, put the sell in afterwards perhaps ask them to reach out and chat to you but selling is just a big no-no on social media so selling where does selling start that's my question i mean does selling start by mentioning your company name and saying what you do and asking no, you to no. check out more so, or so, selling, so, so selling would so selling, no. yeah so, so, so selling would be so i'm simon and i run a really great orange juice company and and um, you know what you should be buying my orange juice just this is the, this is the best orange juice in the world wow buy my orange juice it's it's great thanks very much for watching bye rather than going on and going so i'm simon and i run a great orange juice company so the one thing i know about orange juice is it's full of vitamin c but my orange juice as well what we've done is loaded it with zinc because we know vitamin c isn't necessarily why people get colds they don't they get colds because they've got zinc deficiency thanks for watching and putting the grass down ah. that's not selling coming on beforehand and doing it the previous way of just expecting people to buy your product because that's what you've got is a totally different thing. Okay. And, and so what about inviting people to check out a course that you have or a program that you have? Is that selling for you then? Or? Yeah, it is for me. Um, and, and I would probably use it as almost a throwaway comment at the end of content. Um, so rather than, again, a forceful thing, if you're going to sell it, make a video specifically for, for the course and put money behind it and put it out on Facebook and target your niche avatar. If you want to mention it at the end of a podcast, if the podcast has been almost around that subject matter, then you can say, and you know what, if you want to learn any more, um, because I've already given you a lot of value, then actually come, and, come on my course and it's available on these dates. I'll put a link in the section below. It's very okay. non-plus. It's not, it's not hard selling. Yeah. Whereas the, the video that's specifically for the course would be, hi, I'm Simon. I run a great course called the Digital Foundry. You can come on it and you can learn how to do X, Y, and Z. You also do this, you do that, you do the other, and you'll go away with a great marketing plan for your business. I love that. Yeah. What I'm getting from that is really this, exactly the idea mm -hmm. of focus. So you know that when you're doing a social media content piece, it's to be social media. It is social. It's, yeah. You giving stuff, you talking about the things that have you passionate and that you know a lot about. 
And then when you sell, you freaking sell. You sell the shit out of your program. Super 100%. And, and something, uh, um, a, a chap I, I, I work with, uh, George Swift, is, um, is a mindset mechanic, is absolutely fantastic. And he's very much, and I'm, I'm of the same mindset as well, is that actually, if you're not selling anything, pretty much push social media to one side. Because if you're not fucking making any money, you ain't got a business to do social media for in the first place. So focus on the selling and dabble in the social media on the side. Maybe do it in an evening. Make sure that you're still doing it because you're trying to build a brand. But if you're not selling and making some money, then actually you, you've not now, got a business. Now we're in a chicken and egg conversation, though, because oh, yes. if you're not selling. <laughs> selling to whom? Well, to your tribe. Where's your tribe? Well, you find it on social media. Well, but you have no social media. We're not selling. Like, work, 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 work. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's six of one and a half. It doesn't have the other. Um, but if you've got a product, then you know your product is specifically for a certain type of person. Uh, so I've worked with a really great uh, vegan beard company, um, and they make oils and all sorts of amazing stuff and soaps and things like that. And because they know who their target audience is, they go to vegan conventions and they sell their product. That means then they're making money. Then they can take that away, spend that on what they want to spend it on, but also do social media. But they understood in the first place, I need to sell before I can start doing some of this other stuff. Fabulous. Thank you so much. I think this was super valuable. So in order to stand out and be heard, you need to find your avatar. You need to talk to them in the format that A is comfortable for you. B is comfortable for them. It's what they yeah. want. Therefore you cater to different people. I really got this idea of focusing your message uh, and yep. repurposing what you, so the repurposing what you said is already part of the focusing, but then also knowing what you're doing. Are you selling? Are you socialing? Social media. Yeah. <laughs> socialing, I like that. <laughs> That's going to be our new thing. Are you socialing? Um, yeah. And uh, what, what else? Did, did I miss anything? That was what I. I don't think so. I think that's, um, I think good. we've uh, kind of covered it all off there. And my, my, I love that point that you brought from the radio world. One thought per link. Yeah. Stop scattering, splashing the brilliance. One thought per link. Boom, boom, boom. Take Don't confuse yourself. Like a consistent journey. That's the idea. Business is just confusing enough without making it even more confusing. Oh, tell me, Bali, darling. Tell me, Bali. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure having you, Simon. If people Thank want to talk with you, they'll find you uh, at the perceptionstudios.co.uk. They can indeed, or they can just go and find me on social media. And um, pretty much all my social medias are Simon Scholes. Um, if you just search me, you'll find me on different social medias. I'll chuck you the links and then you can put them in the description. That's exactly what we're going to do. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Enjoy life and business and keep standing out. Mm -hmm.